Hey, hey kiddos, it is Tanglewood Sue, and yep, I got another tutorial for you. So for those of you who may not be quite in the know, that's okay, I'm just a little bit TikTok famous. Yeah, I'm letting it go to my head. It turned it purple, just a little bit, just a smidge, like just, just teeny tiny, but it feels so good. Why? Because I'm meeting so many more people. You're one of them, I bet. I bet you found me over there, right? All right, so, I have been painting this couch on my TikTok channel and people have been going poof, poof, poof. Yeah, some of them are like, what's up with that hair? And how old are you? And why are you here on our TikTok? And are you gonna dance? Yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna do artistic things. Haven't haven't learned one of the dances yet. I haven't my because my daughter won't practice with me. <laughs> Feel the rain on your skin. No one else can do. Only you can let it in. No one ever skin. Good. Good enough. <laughs> so anyway, I started doing this couch and the number one question I got after, is it crunchy? Does it rub off? Okay, yeah, no. Um, I'm not one of those people that does a video and then, and then it doesn't work, but I just post the video anyway. That's lame. If I'm posting a video, it, it, it worked. Or I'm teaching you what not to do. All right, so yeah, all right, enough said. The second big question I got was, can you paint leather? And I said, I don't know, let's find out. So I did some research and I found out that you could spend a lot of money or we could use what we already had. Well, what I already have, because I retail Miss Lillian's no wax, chalk paint and I found out on my retail site that we can use that for leather and I'm like oh my gosh it's like finding out that you want to make this exotic cake but you need like this really crazy ingredient and you're like where am I ever gonna find that ingredient and then you go into your pantry and you're like what I have cardamom it's right there I bought that the last time I wanted to do a crazy cake <laughs> so I said let's do it so I got this chair I found it on the side of the road like five years ago. So y'all, if you're not if you're not down with the makeover of this chair uh, and you want it restored, there is another channel for you. It's called Antiques R Us. This is the Tanklewood Sioux Show. We are not restoring it, but we are saving it from a landfill, let me tell you. So I picked it up and it's got this huge gouge. The leather is wearing off, but I'm like, Look at this, look at this detail. I mean, it's fantastic, it's gorgeous. So I save it, and I save it. It goes back into the pile of things I'm gonna get to, and then back into the pile of things I'm gonna get to, and I didn't think I'd ever get to that thing. But then, you guys said, can you paint leather? And I went, I can go get that thing. So that's what we did. So let me take you through the steps. Number one, we had to repair it. All right, so the first part of this video is just fixing these gouges, the second half of the video is how to paint. If you wanna keep going on, if you wanna keep keeping on, just fast forward, scroll, move your mouse, it's fine. I'm not offended. And if you wanna know how I did the couch video, click this link, or this link, or this link, or this link. I don't know where my editor's gonna put it, but you can go see the whole couch video. We're onto leather now. All right, so first thing I want you to do is if your piece is already done, fixed, beautiful, move on to the second half. If you've got gouges, scratches, your cat has had at it, here's a tip for you. Number one, you can spend some money. I don't like spending money, unless it's on nice, fun things to eat. Or craft supplies. I Yeah, okay, I spend money. Not on clothes. <laughs> You can uh, go get a leather repair kit, a vinyl repair kit. You can go to your local AutoZone. You can go, any, you go to anywhere online. You can buy something to fix it. If you wanna go on the cheap, follow this, because this is kinda cool. You can. I know, it sounds crazy. I found it on YouTube. I tested it for you, and it worked. Here's what I did. I cleaned the piece. Then I used Gorilla Glue super glue, okay? Because it holds really tight, really fast. These are for the big gouges. So I pinched it together and then I poured in the glue and then I sat there for like 30 seconds. I gotta tell you, this was agony. Me sitting still for 30 seconds was like ridiculous. So I had to sing myself a song, I did a live. 
honestly, that felt like eternity, but I did it. And I sutured, basically, basically it was like my piece had been in a knife fight and I was using super glue to suture it back together. So now we've got these pieces that are sutured, but it's a little hard. So I took a razor blade and I, I sliced it off. Any place that was sticking up, because the glue dries hard, it has to dry hard. It has to hold it together. But if it pokes up in any different places, kind of weird, just, just take a little razor and slice it off. Just, just slice it off. So now we've got it, no big gaps, but there's still a few places that need smoothing over. Here's what we did, rubber cement. Mm -hmm. Good old rubber cement, cost me 97 cents at Target just saying and then a roll of toilet paper here's how it goes your piece rubber cement layer of toilet paper let it dry rubber cement layer of toilet paper let it dry we're basically making a paper mache repair but instead of plaster we're using rubber cement and toilet paper y'all I sculpted it and then I sanded it and then I sprayed a sealant on top and then I painted it. And so far, it's holding up great. So you can go with option A, spend a little more money, but here's the trick with what was great with option B. It looks modeled. It doesn't look like a new repair. See, that's what always bothers me with the leather repair kits. It's always like you kind of got this textured leather over here, but then you fix it and it's all smooth. So I guess you could, you could texture that leather, I don't know. All I know is the toilet paper worked. I highly recommend it. We got our piece, it's ready for paint, nope. We have to clean it in a way that will accept the paint. And we're gonna use first step prep for that. We're putting a little bit on a sponge and we're gonna wash the whole thing down. I use first step prep, it's by Miss Lillian's. It is a deglosser and a degreaser. And those are two things we need. We need to get the gloss off of the old leather and we need to get any greases and oils off so that the paint will stick. It also etches it just a teeny tiny bit to make, to agitate it, to agitate it so that the paint still sticks on there, okay? So first step is first step prep. Second step, pick your color. Pick your color, people! Will this work with regular old latex paint? Will this work with Debbie's Design Diary? Will this work with any old paint you have on your shelf? I don't know. You're gonna have to test it. What will work? What I have tested for you in this video is Miss Lillian's No Wax Chalk Paint. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's the only way. I'm saying it's the way that I'm showing you here today and I'm saying that I already tried it. And I used one jar, one jar, and I did the whole couch. So I'm, um, come on now. Anyway, you can choose a metallic, you can choose a color, you can go neutral. Why would you do that? Why would you hurt me that way? Here's the thing, get out of my way, get, get, get. The reason I needed to figure out if this could be done with paint is because the only leather paint kits out there come in red, tan, algahyde, black, and brown. Y'all see me use those colors? Do you, do you see those colors in here? Maybe the red, but it's always a burnt red. It's always a, I'm not bold enough to really be red kind of red. No. So I wanted you to have a way to paint your couch any color you want, your chair any color you want, not what car manufacturers say. While we're on the subject of cars, they're just as boring as the leather these days. My goodness gracious, the last time I have seen a fun looking car. It's heartbreaking. All right, back to the subject at hand. We've got it prepped. You've picked your color. What I want you to do is to paint a very light coat of that color. Don't try to get full coverage, just rub it in. You'll see here that I'm actually using a different color than the color I'm gonna use on top. I happen to have some leftover color that was in the same color family as the torrid teal that I'm going to be using. And I wanted to just use that up as my base layer, um, kind of as a background, okay? So it, it wasn't gonna show, but it was gonna start to cover up the brown. I didn't wanna use my fancy metallic paints to cover the brown because metallic paints are a little more expensive. So I used a regular paint. I think this is um, Southern Junkers Mother Nature, which I always mispronounce and I always drop the F-bomb. I'll just try not to do that. I know, it happens. Um, so we used that, rubbed it in with a little bit of water, spritz of water, spritz of that, rubbed it in and let it dry. Let it dry. Is it dry? Feel it, test it. 
make sure you do a little fingernail test. Make sure that your paint has stuck, is done stuck. Um, if it's not sticking, it means that your leather was not clean enough or something else weird is happening. Put a coat on, honestly, you guys, and then let it dry. Not full coverage on the first coat. Second coat, you can start to get full coverage, but don't go too heavy. If you're putting on a brush and it's not fully covering it, just wait. You might need three coats. I did mine in about three. Uh, you doesn't really matter about your brush strokes. I always try to hide mine. Don't be, try to be too perfect. But because I was going for leather, I was kind of modeling it anyway. Uh, Y'all know me, smush and mush, stab it to death. And um, let it dry. That's it. You're done. I know. I yap a lot. Just so these, these tutorials are long enough for you guys. <laughs> Will it rub off? No. Is it gonna stay on there? Yeah. Is there any other top coat you would do? You don't need one, but here's what I am gonna do just to be on the safe side. I'm putting a little bit of my homemade DIY wax on there. I'm calling it Sue's Wonder Wax. Ta -ta! Basically, I forgot to order wax. And I ordered all the paint and I forgot to order the wax. And the orders are taking six weeks to arrive. I don't have six weeks to wait for clear wax for my furniture. So I'm making my own. And I tried it out on the chair. And it's kind of awesome. I would say a salve or a wax, a clear wax, that you kind of rub in, uh, kind of like, you know, like you're putting on the oil or like you're putting on the lotion. I do think it'll, oh my God, that just made me, that just, yeah. That just made me think of um, Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> you gotta oil the leather so it stays soft. <laughs> oh. Put it in the basket. Put it in the basket or baby gets the lotion. What is the line? I have to I have to figure out that line. That's just sick and twisted enough to put in my video. Um, but basically, yes. If you want to keep the leather, just like your horse tack or your boots or anything else, putting a conditioner on there will help keep it supple. So that that's it. That's it. She's I'm just looking at her right now. She's done. She's done. Oh, y'all want to know about the trim too? All right, part two. We've got it painted. Let's say you have some really fun, fantastical carved trim on your furniture. Well, now that you've gone kind of crazy awesome with painting the leather, you can't just like leave that alone. It, I mean, you know, it's, it's all by itself. Just lonely thinking, why don't I get special treatment? Why don't I get the fun updo, makeup, redo, makeover, furniture flip? It's just sad. So here's what I did. I said, all right, Tori Teal, I'm gonna match you with metallic bronze. And I painted all the trim bronze. It was very pretty. It wasn't enough. <laughs> Is it ever enough with me? I thought, what if, what if I used every metallic wax I had just to see if I could get something that was magical? So anyway, I started putting it on. I put it on a little bit. I put a little bit more, and I put a little bit more. I started overlapping them. Dang, is this not beautiful? So the trick is to just put them on and before they completely dry, buff them. Cause you're like, wait, I just put it on. Why am I wiping it off? Because when you wipe it, you're buffing it. You're not actually wiping it off. If you wipe it on and you wipe it right off, that's one thing. But buffing is wiping it on, putting it on, and then waiting about mm, three or four minutes, then buffing it and you're blending all the colors together and that's what makes the wax hard. That's what makes it hard. And then you're done. You don't need a top coat over wax. Wax hardens on its own. The only way wax will come back off is if you sand it off or you use mineral spirits. So don't worry about putting a top coat over top of wax. It's just, it's redundant. Uh, and isn't it beautiful? It looks like an oil slick or um, a prism or a mermaid tail. I mean, take your pick. It's just. I love it. I love how it turned out. So that's how that's how we did it. That's your part two of this video. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Um, subscribe, please. I know I, I know who you are. You're watching my video. You're even thinking to yourself, I like this video. Click the button.